My name's Laura Carrier. I work at the uh, NASA Center for Climate Simulation. And I'm telling a story today about centralizing storage with, without losing our minds, basically. Uh, and it, it was a challenge. Um, so, we are, our, our effort here is to actually bring NASA climate science data together into one location so that we can do some fabulous analytics and, and facilitate really exciting science. The more data we can put in one location, the happier we are because the more science we can actually facilitate. So this story includes not just the challenges, the technical challenges we met, but also some geopolitical challenges that we have met. And uh, we'll find out at the end whether or not I still have uh, retained my sanity. So first of all, we started this project about two years ago, and Motivation 1.0 was to bring data analytics and the storage really close together. We wanted to get some data locality, get the fastest analytics we possibly could, uh, and we also wanted to do low cost, not because we're cheap, but because we are the federal government and we, we, well, we are good stewards of American taxpayer money. <laughs> So, in addition to being good stewards of taxpayer money, we also want as much storage, so we can put as much really cool NASA data on, on a hardware so that we can get the best science. So, uh, along with this, we want to build some analytics tools. And I could go on for a really long time on our analytics tools. I, I, will have a, I do a, a demo over at uh, the NASA booth uh, tomorrow at 3 if you want more details. But we have written some software that allows us to allow unvetted users who don't, don't have NASA accounts to use our, uh, our, collect, our data collections and our operations that we have fully vetted. And you can just come download this client software and run calculations on our data without downloading data and without writing the code. So this software was written in Spark, and we also have another version written in, in Hadoop. And at the time when we did this two years ago, we had a really cool piece of software to do, um, uh, to do the, uh, the Hadoop POSIX connector piece. So we want to connect this to all our environments. We get this data in here, and we want to make sure everyone can use it. So we want to get to Discover, which is our traditional HPC environment, and we want to be able to get to Adapt, which is our cloud environment, and uh, our remote visualization, as well as our uh, data services, which are outward facing. So we built this system, about 15 petabytes uh, of hardware. I am not going to actually mention the hardware vendor because I'm not going to say uh, anything really, truly fabulous about him. So the original hardware vendor, I'll say fabulous things about DDN. He was giving me a bad look there. Trust me, we're good with DDN. So um, it, we just struggled. There were challenges. Uh, the, the hardware, we, we were pushing it too hard is really what it turned out to be. Uh, we had hardware failures on top of that. The, the vendor is now EOL, the, the, the hardware. So that, that, made, that was a challenge also. Uh, we had staff changes, uh, so that, that contributed to uh, all of the work we had to do. The way it was configured, we did not actually have redundancy on the data, and so there was issues with failover, et cetera, et cetera. So because of this and performance issues, we had trouble getting it accepted by other uh, environments within, within the NCCS. They looked at us and said, yeah, I don't know, uh, I got a nice stable environment over here, I'm a little nervous with that. All right, so fine, nonetheless. We did get it operational, it is up and running, but we, we went, took a step back to say, okay, what can we do better? How can we, how can we do uh, something that works in a, in a more integrated fashion? So right now we decided, then we decided the data locality issue wasn't a problem. We have fabulous networks and so it, it didn't really make any difference. So we backed away from that. We still want low cost because we're still the federal government. Uh, we, we decided to focus initially on curated data products. So this is the kind of thing that has a second copy in an archive or, and, and is very well understood. So this data can be input, could be output. Somebody's output could be somebody else's input. And we want to reduce duplication uh, where users come in and say, oh, I need this Landsat data. I need this MODIS data. We want it all in one place. So we are, put, again, putting as much science data in place for folks to use. We're also trying to do uh, some work with our, our mass store system. Uh, one of our, our philosophies here is you can't do analytics on data that sits on tape. So as much as possible, we are trying to pull that data off tape, get it on disk somewhere so that folks can actually use it. We also have an awful lot of data in our mass store that really frankly doesn't need to be there. In, in fact, we have 90 petabytes of, of data in there. Probably not all, okay, I'm just gonna go with, I'm not gonna make a guess, we don't need all of it. So we've been working on data management plans uh, with our, our users and uh, some storage management tools to help them understand what's out there, what they need, what they don't need. Uh, and this, this whole architecture is, going, is designed to add some colder storage, the ability to tear out to maybe a NASA archive, uh, maybe just a, 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 an Amazon Glacier, something like that. 
So what we're still looking for, uh, redundancy without replication, uh, we want data integrity, we want stability so it can be accepted. So we're looking at software to do all of this, just, you know, just getting straight up JBODs wasn't going to do it. So off we go looking for some software. And we found software, but first of all, I'm going to come back to software in just a second. Here's a pretty picture. It's pretty standard. You've got your tiered architecture. Nothing new here. It, it's, it's just really a pretty picture to look at while I tell the software story. So in June or thereabouts of, of the year, we were looking at some software that was going to do everything we wanted. And, and we were pretty happy with it. Uh, we were getting quotes. We thought this was the way to go. Uh, the only challenge was that the software was written by Russians. And on July 13th, this came out. You don't need to read this. I've read it. This would be the indictment for the Russian uh, hackers from the 2016 election. So fabulous. Lute and I took a look at each other and went, yeah, no. We're not going there. It's gonna, it was going to be hard enough to get NASA to approve the Russian software in the first place. This was, it just wasn't going to happen. So we had to move on to, to, we had to step back a little bit again. Okay, what are we really trying to do here? And, and we got to the point where it's like, we just want to get something done. We want to get this the science data out there. We want to get this working for our staff. And one of the things that our, our illustrious leader, Dan Duffy, frequently says is, we want to improve time to science. So who and I looked at each other and said, you know what? We've been talking with DDN, and DDN, you know, Rich Arena is, he's persistent, I'll give him that. And so we've been having lots of conversations, you know, who is right behind us here. And so he was still in the game, and he was still talking with us. So we went back to him and said, all right, all right, Rich, well, what are we going to do here? Because what we want to do is improve time to science. And so when you go back to management and use their own words against them, you're more likely to win than when you use your words against them. So sure enough, Dan went, all right, you got me. Let's do this. So we went off and uh, developed a lovely diagram which shows all of the architecture. You can see down here, I don't have a pointer, but the DDN's down here in the bottom right. The traditional, <laughs> the traditional HPC environment is above that. The cloud adapt and analytics environment is over there. A whole lot of networking to make all of this work. Uh, and, and then one of the other requirements we got from management was please, 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 do not buy all of this hardware, put it on the floor, and come back to me and say, I'm missing a cable. That does not make management happy. So we started drawing more diagrams. Here's one diagram to, to look at cables. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a fair number of cables. All right, well, we also need management. So there's, there's, there's more management cables. And well, really, we need to know all of the cables. So oh, for the love of all that is, 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 is sacred in the world, now we have to turn this into a... Uh, uh, in, into a, an RFP, or at least a, uh, a bill of goods that we want to get purchased. So we're working on this, we're working on the DDN, and um, sure enough, the, the DDN purchase gets gets approved, we get moved through, and then, ta-da, we have our beautiful DDN. It was delivered on November 6th. Uh, it's an FS, F, SFA 14K, 1800 disks, 12 terabytes, 21.6 petabytes raw. Uh, we have short doors. So our short doors mean that DDN has to assemble it in-house, disassemble it, drive it to our place, tip it over so we can get through all of our short doors, bring it on the floor, and reassemble it. So I've been told a story during reassembly that sometimes, if as you're reassembling, you don't get everything level, bad things can happen with the ball bearings. And Luckily, luckily, in this particular case, no bell bearing issues. So all was good. So we are super happy. This is happy DDN. But did you notice there's something missing in here? There's something that's not there. So we actually have sad DDN because we don't have our servers. Why don't we have our servers? Well, there's now we go back to the geopolitics. Because in, in, in all that work of putting together the cables, putting together the switches, putting together the servers, we finally got all that put together. And then October 4th, I believe, happened, because that's what we put to, to use as our servers. Supermicro, thank you, Bloomberg. So happy to hear this story. So we are still working to push this order through at NASA. And uh, we, we also have some backup plans, and we're pushing, we're doing the things. If there's anybody out there who is a vendor, I'm going to give you this message. I need to know country of origin. And if it's not in the Trade Agreements Act, don't bother, because I cannot buy it anymore. So this is really, really important. Um, and as I have a beautiful DDN, I have, we we're scraping up some hardware to make it work. Um, we're we're going to get this eventually. So the last question is, do I have my sanity? 
And I think it's somewhere on the floor where we dropped the ball bearings a while ago. Uh, but we're going to get there. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, I really appreciate it.